Hey folks, welcome back. This is actually going to be the Halloween series 1.5. So I was trying to sleep last night and I realized two things that were wrong with my codex. And so I need to go in and fix them, but I wanted to take you guys along for the ride. First thing that I need to do, I came down here. I had a feeling I was like, I don't remember Ethan Clark's name showing up in the outline at all. I went in and I actually went in and changed and gave him a color to make it easier for me to see his name. And I also went ahead and added one for Professor Bell as well. So now Ethan is red and Professor Bell is orange. So I'm actually going to go through my outline here. I've got pink, I've got orange, and down here I've got green. But if you notice, I don't have anything that's red. I have a decision to make. So I either can ignore or get rid of Ethan Clark, which that's the direction I'm heading. I don't really think she needs a love interest, but he might be helpful while she's trying to do this ritual and get rid of the plant spirits or free the plant spirits. So I'm on the fence as far as that goes. And I really don't think she needs a love interest. It's a short story and that adds a little bit more depth than I'm wanting to do right now. So we need to address that. And then the other thing that we need to talk about, the story that I've been working on is actually where it's Kraken involved. So mythological Kraken. And my protagonist is able to communicate with the Kraken using telepathy. This reminded me that Haley is supposed to be able to communicate with the plant spirits using our enchanted tools. But I didn't put anything in my pro style guide to indicate how she's going to communicate or what that looks like in the story. So typically, whenever I have someone who has any kind of internal dialogue, I like it to be italicized. So it stands out. So when she's having this dialogue, which I'm assuming it will be some kind of telepathy with the plant spirits, we need some way to set that off so that people know that it's not spoken aloud. How I'm doing that with my Kraken in my other story is that I'm actually putting uh, single quotes and the whole thing is italicized. So we're actually going to start here with the pro style guide and we're going to come here to chat and I'm going to open up my thread. So just going to confirm I've got my YA dark fantasy monster horror is my developmental editor. I'm still in Claude and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to ask it to please go ahead and include how we're going to format the communication for internal dialogue because it's not there. It talks about internal dialogue, but it doesn't talk about it needing to be italicized. And then we also need to have it set off the conversations between Haley and the plant spirit in you know some way that makes it a little bit more obvious. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so it took me a couple minutes to figure out how I wanted to word this and what exactly I wanted to ask. Instead of saying, hey, this is how I want to do it, I wanted to ask the LLM what it thought. It doesn't really think, but I wanted to ask it what would be the best way for us to format the dialogue with the plant spirits. So I'm going to go ahead and press send. Okay, so we've got here now dialogue and internal monologue. This is going to be a specific section of the pro style guide. So I'll actually go back in to the codex entry and make this change. Haley's internal dialogue should be italicized to distinguish it from the narrative prose. And then it actually provides an example. External dialogue should be crisp and natural uh, with distinct voices for each character using standard quotation marks. So there we go. I don't actually like tags. I prefer to do my prose a little bit differently, but for the sake of this project, 
I will leave it as it is. Uh, I prefer to have um, action tags. There we go. So plant spirits dialogue should be formatted in, and then we've got the little alligator greater than sign and written in a more ethereal and poetic style. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Interesting. And then when Haley communicates with plant spirits using the enchanted tools, format it as a combination of her internal monologue and the plant spirits dialogue. Can you understand me? I projected through the trembling vine and then came the faint response. I I don't know if I like that. I think I'm going to push back. I'm pretty happy with being able to format it with a single quotation marks and having it italicized. So I think I'm going to do that, tell it what I want it to do, and then have it change it. So let me take a minute and I will we'll do that. And then we will see what, what comes back. Okay. So I put uh, that I'm not fond of the formatting above and that I want to ensure that the entire telepathic discussion is formatted similarly, uh, both on Haley and the plant spirit sides. And so I suggested, why don't we use the single quote and italicize it now? Um, as far as the uh, dialogue tags go, I don't like them. So I decided to go for broke and put in here. So for the external dialogue, I want to use action beats. Action beats is what chat GPT said is what I was trying to describe. So there are small actions or descriptions of a character that are placed before or after the dialogue that indicate who is speaking without needing a dialogue tag. I put that description in there just to make sure that it understands the difference between a story beat and what I say is an action beat in this case. And I said that I'd like to use them instead of using dialogue tags. Note that I did not say do not use dialogue tags. Another way I could say this is to avoid dialogue tags. You don't want to say the word no because the LLM has a tendency of taking that and running with it. Okay, so I will go ahead and send this and let's see what it does. Great. Okay, so we've got our internal monologue is now italicized. External dialogue should use standard quotation marks. Prefer action beats over dialogue tags. Great. This is exactly what I wanted. Uh, and then additionally, so all telepathic communication is going to have the single quote and then it'll be italicized, which is fantastic. Um, use the dialogue of the plant spirit, plant spirits sparingly for maximum impact. Great. Make it ethereal and slightly unsettling. That's fantastic. And then when describing the sensation, it says to use rich sensory language to convey the un otherworldly experience. So that's awesome. I'll go and I'll update our pro style guide with this information. And then we will move on to fixing the outline. One sec. Okay. So our pro style guide is now updated and I have added those additional items into our dialogue and internal monologue section. I've also went ahead and added because this is a text format. You actually aren't going to see the italics. So what I did was is in markdown for whenever you went to italicize something, you actually add the asterisks. So you put asterisks before it and you put an asterisk after it. And then that indicates that it should be italicized. I did this here and then I also came down and I did it again here for the telepathic communication as well. Okay. So now we're going to move on and we are going to work a little bit more on our outline. You guys noticed I created it as one of the first things. And so we created our characters and added some additional information to our characters and our setting and a couple other things. And I took that original outline and I didn't update it with the new input. So that one is hundred percent on me, but there are a couple different ways that you can actually work with your outline. So you can come down here in the same chat and tell it, call the outline by name as long as you say outline, because it's actually here in the codex, I can communicate with this document. 
And I can just say, review the outline. Where do we want to put Ethan Clark? Or how do we want to include Ethan Clark into this outline? So that's one way of doing it. Another way is we can actually chat and create just a brand new chat and have a conversation with the outline. But it would just be the outline at that point. It wouldn't be the outline plus all of the other information that we have discussed in this chat. I'm going to tell you what I have been doing. And let's go up. I come here and I go to copy the conversation. I typically use the markdown version. And I actually go into Claude. I'm going to paste the conversation in here. And then I have all of the information that is from this chat. So everything that we've discussed, the only thing that I don't have is I don't have the codex entries, but I don't really need them because they're actually in the chat. So I got everything covered there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab my outline, just copy it. And let's go uh, take a look at this outline for the story we've discussed. And give me some ideas for how we could include the character Ethan. That's his name, right? Ethan. Yeah, his name is Ethan. Okay. Into this story. Okay. So I went ahead and so I've, this here is this document is everything from the chat. And then this is just another copy of the outline that we're working on just to make sure. And I'm going to go ahead and send it and see what it says. And this is Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And it's the same thing that I'm using in Novel Crafter. However, uh, I'm able to grab all of that information, throw it in here and chat with it without changing what's actually in Novel Crafter. I've been doing this quite a bit throughout my project and I'm doing I'll show you when we get into the writing part, especially how I'm actually utilizing Claude to do that. You don't have to do this. This is just the way I'm doing it because I have a Claude subscription and I don't, I just don't want to add anything else to this chat. It just makes it too unwieldy. And anyways, so we could incorporate him by introducing him as the local gardener who maintains the grounds outside the greenhouse, which is exactly what I was thinking. Um, I was trying to sleep last night. I was like, you know what? We could, he could maintain the gardens outside or the lawn outside. He meets her when she first arrives, offering a friendly face and local knowledge. He could warn her about strange occurrences. She can tell him about the, the, the moving plants. Let's see. He can help her with research. I don't really like that. He can come to check on her if she, when she hasn't left the greenhouse. So, cause she actually gets trapped inside the greenhouse. He could help her. I don't know about that. He could raise the stakes. Role in the climax. He could play a crucial role in the final ritual. I don't know about that either. Presence could provide emotional support. Then we get into this romantic subplot. And, and again, I'm, I'm not really looking forward to adding in the romantic subplot. Let's decide. I think he should maintain the grounds here. Thoughts. So I'm good with her meeting him in act one. 
And I don't know what he's going to do or what purpose he's going to serve just yet. So let's keep going. I don't really want him involved with this moving plant or in the research, but he can come back and check on her. Okay. And I'm not sure. Uh, we'll actually just say, let's remove his role as a love interest. The story is too short to include that. However, how else can he help in the story? And then I'll say, please give me a revised outline. Please be sure to include where each scene Uh, or the setting. Let me see. Okay. Let's see how that goes. Oh, it gave me a whole bunch more scenes. That is a problem. I just went and blew up our story. I am so sorry. <laughs> okay, let's revise this. Okay, guys, I went ahead and I finished up this little bit here. So please revise the outline to include only four scenes. The short story should be between 6,000 and 7,000 words when completed. Uh, and then it actually went in and uh, gave me my four scenes. And it also include what the location would be for each. I like down here, it says that the condensed outline maintains the key elements of the story while ma making sure that we, we have that 1500 to 1750 words to reach our target word count. So that's exactly what we're trying to do. I also ask because it actually has access to all of our book Bible entries that we have developed so far when I copied it in there from the chat. I asked if there's any modifications that need to be made for it to better align with the new outline. And it actually gave us some things that we need to go in and modify. I will take care of that. It did actually add in here one called the ritual. So I believe I made a comment about this yesterday when I was filming the original video that there is actually one called the balancing ritual. I asked, is the ritual above the same as the balancing ritual, which is an established entry? Now it is. And so it made some suggestions on how to edit it to fit the story better. The last things I'm going to do are ask it to please update the pitch hook and premise to better align with the updated story. And I'll go ahead and send that. Oop. And we had an internal server error. Let's try this again. Okay, fantastic. So I'm going to take these edits and go put them into our codex. And then I will get that codex ready for everyone to be able to download. And then we will move on and start writing actually our first chapter. That'll be the next video. Have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you guys later.